we have been learning about pollution, environmental degradation since um, first grade. It is one of the most boring topics to talk about. And uh, also, the three hours have become so redundant now. But we thought that we'd still take this topic and still present your poem because this actually means something. Hey. Shh, listen. You, yes, you. Offspring of the earth appearing as though you didn't hear nature calling. She, who was a siren in her days. Whose eyes shone brighter than strange stars man has never seen the light of. She, whose skin reminded you of the copper sky on an autumn evening. She, who wore a string of fragile flowers fetched from a forest far off. Unaffected and free from the frightening fate foolish and fickle man would give it. But shh, listen. Don't, don't you hear that she's, she's been saying? saying? Stop. Of course you don't. For you have forgotten the language of love and contentment. You speak only in terms of greed and development. And she's sick and tired of your hypocrisy. Your brain that's hardwired to think that man is superior is going to cause you to burn in your own hellfire. What supreme arrogance on the part of posh, politically correct and self-righteous environmentalists who give impressive speeches on ozone layer depletion but return to their air-conditioned homes in their fuel-inefficient air-conditioned cars. But shh. Listen. Listen, she never needed me. She never needed you. She, she never, never needed, needed us. us. This planet never needed saving. Why don't we acknowledge that it is we who need her? Nature did have music for those who listen. Not anymore. She has a warning. And those who do bother to listen now, hear it in the mountain winds, the ocean waves, the leaves, the sun, the pouring rains, the pale moonlight can't hide the flames that are rising again and again over the broken walls. It's turning the parched earth desolate, licking each twig dry. The heat is unsustained, the thirst unquenched, the glass is fogging up. The fingertips, the fists, the limbs, the rib cage is suffocated by loose skin, confining their desperate lungs that pound the ceiling, shatter the echelon that we thrive in, and fracture this rusted rung from which we look down in contempt. We have climbed the ladder by greasing the rung underneath with our misquoted greed and our misleading needs. And we have turned our whip. Our whip, our whip we have turned into broken bridges that have tight ropes as steps and quick sand as the safety net. But we have fallen. Accelerating towards the labyrinth that we had created to tear every sinew from its bone from those on the lowest rung. But there is no ladder anymore, no throne that we can sit on. The tears that we have created lie all irrelevant. The industrialist and environmentalist, the homeless and he who is ungrateful for the roof above his head, share the same tears, share the same lack of resources for me, for you, for us, let, let alone, alone our, our children. children. This paradise we have converted into a merchandise. We have raised the economy by raising forests to the ground, erasing any sense of accountability. But she has overcome tornadoes, she has overcome volcanoes, she has overcome the reversal of poles, and, and she, she will, will overcome, overcome the human race, race as well. well. We will be just another biological mistake, an evolutionary cul-de-sac, an irrelevant, insignificant, close-ended species. We will be the reason for the end to have arrived. We will be the last chapter in this gloomy book. No answers to the questions that no one ever bothered asking. No satisfactory explanation, no conclusion for our sad demise. No, no epilogue. epilogue. So, so shh, listen, listen, it's time, time up. up.